And welcome back to You Rejoin 120. I'm Jeff Cliff. And this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a computer science student at the University of Regina. And this is going to be another kind of shorter video here uh, in the beautiful Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada, uh, where basically the, the idea in question here is what exactly are credit hours? So when we point to 120 here, that, uh, what exactly does that 120 stand for? I mean, why is it that uh, the university has kind of declared these arbitrary numbers to go along with each class uh, so that we kind of have a gauge of uh, how far along our degree path we are? Why is it 120, not 100, or you know, stuff like that? And it seems to be that the university itself takes about, and it varies from class to class a little bit, but roughly one hour per credit hour per day. So if you have a three credit hour class, like for example, math and three credit hours times seven days a week, 21 hours a week is one class. Five classes, that's 105 hours. Give or take. You might be able to get away with a little bit less, but not much. So when you take a full course load of classes, you are working all day, all the time. Four classes isn't quite so bad. That's two full-time jobs. You can get away with that and probably have a part-time job on top of that. It's possible to do. Uh, five classes is pretty close to as much as you can reasonably get. I have seen people do six classes, but those people tend to have either taken some parts of those classes or there's intersections between those two, you know, six classes uh, such that they can get away with kind of uh, using some of the work that they're doing in one class uh, as part of the kind of learning time for another class, etc. There, again, may be exceptions to every rule, including this one, but this is a general rule that I would recommend that you follow, especially at the University of Virginia. May it be at other universities, things are different. But at least in this case, uh, you want to be putting in that many hours per class. When you get that Stuart Calculus textbook, you're going to be sitting at that textbook for that many hours per week uh, cons consecutively. So you're, you're you know, spending, you're budgeting your time, you're looking at your schedule, and you're looking at how much time you need to schedule so that when you do your 10% time on top of this, you then have a nice round number to then look at what your 10% hours should be. And if you want to have less than 10%, uh, you know, that's all also okay. Go, go see the 10% uh, video for more details on that. The point here is that not necessarily that you should take, you know, four classes or that you should have, you know, this exact amount of you know, hours in your day allocated for every single particular thing budgeted months in advance, although, you know, that is a good idea. Uh, it's that also keep in mind that you're going to be, tr there's other things that you have to do during the course of a week other than just studying, interacting with your peers on this topic, which you could probably include in that period of time, uh, and attending classes, taking exams, uh, and other things. So for example, you need to sleep at least a little bit, um, maybe not the full eight hours a night. Uh, generally, there's a trade-off between uh, schoolwork social life and sleep, uh, where you get to pick two, um, and so you, you will be giving, making off some trade-offs uh, no matter what you do uh, in, in all of this, but uh, you want to uh, sleep, you want to also, uh, there's transportation costs, and depending where you live, if you live on campus in the dorms, you can get away with five classes, because what else are you doing? You're you know, in class, and then you're almost immediately back in your dorm doing studying stuff and then sometimes you can do social things or you can sleep or whatever. But you can handle a much higher course load if that transportation cost is zero. Whereas if you're walking two hours to class and then two hours back from class with a backpack full of textbooks so you can't run very fast, that slows you down. And that eats away at what you can do with this three hours per class per day. Um, and so that, that drags you behind. Also, jobs. If you, you know, university costs money. So you have to get that money from somewhere. You're probably going to have to get a job if you don't have a scholarship or student loans or whatever. 
and sometimes those jobs you're going to have to work 40 hours a week on that. So suddenly your 168 hours a week starts to be spoken for very quickly. Uh, and so you should, especially for considering putting 10% time in the mix somewhere, which is, again, something that I would also suggest, uh, that, you know, you're, you're running out of time very quickly. And so that alone is not a big deal because you can still do it. You can still budget. You can move or live somewhere nearby campus uh, and kind of work just the right amount that you can hopefully pay for enough of it that you can make a go of it, uh, and you can take your you know, five classes or whatever it is you need to take to get your degree, fine, great. That is all doable. What's not doable is expecting yourself to do all that with adding another thing, like for example, living in a complete different city, like all those crazy people in White City who think that they can go to the University of Regina despite not even living in Regina. Come on, guys. You're too far away. You know full damn well that Saskatchewan gets blizzards and that highway gets crazy. So suddenly it's not a good idea to not live in the same city that you go to university. Same thing with people who live in uh, PA and go to the U of R. It's crazy. Yes, you can get away with it sometimes, but you're really pushing your luck. Um, and same thing with the people who you know want to be able to raise a family and go to university. You know, great. If you think you can do that and you can budget in your time, fantastic. But you will run into constraints very quickly if you try to take a full course load of work and, you know, do family stuff on top of that. It's your, your amount of commitment to each indivi individual thing is going to suffer, and you might be able to do it, but again, you're, you're not putting in the amount of effort uh, and the amount of work, uh, I guess, that that class is going to really require. And, you know, if you can do it, great, fantastic, you can make your trade-off, make it work do whatever you need to, to, to make a go of things. And don't listen to me if I'm you know, telling you that you can't do something and it turns out you can't. But at the same time, if you're looking at thinking of going to university and you're you know, looking at all your time constraints that you have, um, then just be wary that this is going to bite you in the ass. And you're going to run out of time during the week. You're going to run out of money because you're going to run out of time to work because you're spending enough time in school that you're not going to have time to work and it just gets you know, builds on itself and builds on itself and builds on itself until the whole thing collapses and you get expelled because your marks are not good enough. I narrowly avoided that fate. I was very, very close to having that happen to me. So I speak from experience when I say this, that you have to be able to put some focus to your studies. And that focus is not a small amount for a university degree. It is not as simple as just watching 120 YouTube videos. You actually have to dedicate some of your life to this in order to get the value out of it that you would get from a university degree. And so, yes, you know, some of this is, doesn't take into account some things that have changed. For example, uh, the internet uh, has opened huge possibilities up that was not available when I first started university. And so some of the things that universities do are gonna have to change with time. And this number may drop a little bit as the parts of the world that, uh, you know, use knowledge, uh, start changing in respect to uh, how difficult it used to be to get knowledge uh, and how difficult it used to be to use computers so that this number doesn't have to be as high as it perhaps once was for any particular topic, especially a topic as radically changing as computer science. As well as our uh, knowledge of the human brain is expanding, maybe you'll be able to use some kind of designer drug that I just was not able to access. Modafinil, for example, you may be able to cut your sleep down to zero. I don't know, that may be something that's possible now. You know, students who are doing this, tell me, tell me what, what you're doing to make this all work. Uh, that, that might be possible. Al also, there's a, a drugs like a, th that help you focus and will allow you to kind of hyper-focus to increase your productivity during study time so you don't have to study as often. And maybe, you know, using stuff like Isercise, the website which I could probably link in this video, so that you can read quicker, so that you don't have to spend as much time reading. All of that changes this number a little bit, but at the same time, you have to do something. You cannot just walk into this and expect to be able to just do everything all at once and have things magically work out, because it won't. You'll fail and you'll crash and burn, and you'll not experience things in a good way. Trust me on that. Uh, so, you know, we, we've considered the, the people, the crazy people in White City who are, are trying to go to university and kind of make a go of it, and the people who are kind of trying to do the work, life, and family thing uh, as a rather 
you know, than just kind of two out of the three. Uh, but in addition to kind of that, uh, there, there's also the perception of people who just don't take it seriously at all. And who think that, oh, it's no big deal, I'll just go to university, uh, I'll, you know, just slough off in classes and so on and so forth. And sometimes you can get away with that, especially if you have a lot of money and you don't have to work, uh, and you can kind of, you know, just show up in classes, fall asleep, or whatever. I certainly fell asleep in some of my classes, but at the same time, you get a class or two down the line, you're going to have to start knowing some of the stuff that they expect you to know. And furthermore, the, the value that you would have gotten from that degree, it really starts to de decrease when you start getting higher and higher up, and you start having less and less kind of chance to go back and correct your former mistakes. Um, you know, go back to the failure video on how to kind of deal with mistakes. Yes, there are ways to do it. Yes, there are, you know, you can go back after the fact and learn the material. But the problems start compounding themselves if you don't focus, if you don't plan ahead a little bit and allocate some time to what it is that you want to do with your life. And if that life includes university, then plan on some time commitment being involved in that decision if you want to succeed at it. So, does this mean that university is the only place where this sort of thing happens? Of course not. You know, if you want to be successful in other parts of your life, there may be things uh, that require a, a time commitment similar to university. We understand, or at least have some kind of a metric to gauge university by, uh, and to compare different subjects and different kind of areas within the university that you can learn, uh, and this is it, right here. If your university is not using these credit hours in this way, or if your department, for example, like the economics department, for some reason just doesn't care, uh, very much at the University of Regina, then you are losing out. You should probably switch schools and go to a school that pushes your, you know, you harder a little bit. Uh, I have seen great variance between the different departments, between, for example, the econ department and the physics department. The physics department at the U of R doesn't screw around. If you go to the physics, you know, department, there are people doing experiments. There are people learning math. There are people arguing with each other over the math. You know, they live, sleep, breathe physics. It, it's awesome and it works people who come out of that program are very good at it. Um, uh, maybe the econ people are good enough in the field, but trust me, you can do better, you can be a better student than that, uh, and it is worth it to do so. So, um, if you have any questions about why you should be serious about your time commitment uh, to your university, feel free to ask anywhere where this video is posted. Um, and as usual, you can send a little bit of a Bitcoin donation as you know, thank you for warning you that this is going to kick you in the ass if you haven't had anyone tell you this yet. Because uh, trust me, you've saved yourself some time, money, and tears on that one. Uh, and as usual, hope to see you in the next video.